rescued me. Man, what a good line. I'm just a nobody, but now I'm a somebody. Yeah, amen to that. I'm just a nobody. Trying to tell everybody. Yeah. He's amen. the king. He's the king. Jesus. He he is. Undeniably. Undeniably. Man, God is good. He He's the only one, John, who's ever rolled out of the grave victoriously. <laughs> the only person. The only king. The only human and go only God who's actually been raised from the dead and now sits on the throne forever on the amen. right hand with, with the father. Amen. 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 We're going Brian Nights this morning on this beautiful Friday morning. Let's go. Come on now. And look, it's not just us saying this. These over 500 people saw him raised from the dead. That, that's a lot of people. 500 people. Not only that, but then thousands and thousands and thousands of people, of course. I mean, Jesus then walked the earth for 30 days. 50. 50. Thank you, Brian. No problem. Looking, Brian's my fact checker here. 50 days touching people, healing people, talking with people, and then said, hey, I love you all. I want to stay longer. I'm alive. You can see me. Spread the word. I have to go now up to heaven with my father. But I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah. I'll be Arnold back. Nigger style, baby. Uh-huh. I'll be back. It was actually so I was wrong too. It's actually 40 days. Oh. 40 days he was on the earth and he looked, he looked, and as he was lifted and sended into heaven, the angel mm -hmm. said, Why are you so shocked? He will return in the same manner. And guess where he's gonna land, John? Mount of Olives, where That's we're gonna read right. the Boom. Uh, speaking, of that, speaking of reading the last chapter in Israel, countdown, That's please. Right. Here we are. Seven hundred and thirty one days. Yeah, you know, uh, we have a new uh, warrior with us on this journey. Oh, yeah. Who's, Kai. Uh, who's Israel with us? Not Kai. There's actually Kai and now somebody else. What? Who? 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 Bonnie. Bonnie, hello, Bonnie, is a warrior, and I met him at the gym this morning. He's been a 5.30 a.m. morning crew guy where we kind of just look at each other and nod and say hi. And, you know, when you start to go to the gym that early, you start to kind of, you know, see the same people and say hi and say good morning and make eye contact and, you know, a little small talk here and there, which is great, you know. It's really cool in a commercial gym like that, you can create that kind of environment yeah you know kind of has that crossfit feel that barbell club feel i like that and he came up to me today and had a question about our bible study podcast i have zero idea how he how he knows about it uh he says he he, he has a desire to have a stronger relationship with god he wants to know jesus more and i looked at him i said so you're you're telling me you're kind of lukewarm right now and he was like yeah that that's it I go, oh, brother, I've been there. Let's get hot for the Lord. Let's turn up the fire and get that water boiling for Jesus. Yes. And he was just excited. I told him about our podcast, our journey, what we're doing, uh, how we're going to read the last chapter in Israel. And um, he's going to be listening to this podcast later tonight when he gets home from work. Hey, well, welcome, Bonnie. We're excited for you. Look, this is, a, this is an exciting journey. When you put your trust in the Lord fully now you got to surrender like john and i have he is king my heart is to you lord we i know and believe that you rose from the dead and i believe it and i live it 100 percent. when you do that something changes you are born again and i'm telling you this is a journey that is better than any jungle book ever made any uh, james bond episode Better than the series of 24, which is the most epic series of all time. I'm telling you, it's exciting. <laughs> and even though there's down downtimes in life, you still are pumped and excited because Jesus has been raised from the dead and he is my king. I'm telling you, it's the most exciting thing of your life. 
Yeah, amen to that, Brian. So we are pumped to have uh, Bonnie on this journey. And then speaking of Kai, who called in yesterday, it was great to have Pastor Kai Bishop. Yeah, absolutely. And Chris Willingham came over for a double session yesterday. And, you know, we're just in the Word. I'm obsessed with the Word. I mean, yeah. That, I told my wife that last night. We were ch- talking, and, and me and my wife, we just have these great conversations every night before bed. And it's just our time. You know, the kids are down. You know, we light some candles in the room. You know, we have a, some TV in the background playing, and we just have these amazing conversations every night. And I and I just told my wife last night, I go, I'm obsessed with the word. <laughs> yes. Like, you could call me a Jesus freak. Me too. Call you know, me one. Back from the 90s. Like, I can't stop. I've never been more addicted to anything in my entire life. Yeah, you know what? In fact, I'm going to um, I'm gonna go to my Instagram right now, and I'm going to update my profile. I am a Jesus freak. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> look live on air look this is i'm looking at brian's screen right now he's yeah. got the whole profile he's got i could see his screen yeah. look at this he's really doing it yeah i am so i am a, I'm a i am a disciple of jesus and i'm a preacher of the gospel i am a jesus freak or you could say i'm obsessed with jesus yeah, I, like I like that Je- i like jesus freak i'm gonna go with jesus freak yeah, bring First. it back, 90s style. Yeah. What would people say if they knew you were a Jesus freak or something like that? I never really listened to them. That, that band, there it is right there. I am it's a up. Jesus Look freak. That. Go to I am, what's your Instagram account? I am Mr. Neitch. I am Mr. N-E-I-T-S-C-H. Yeah. Also, if you, if you can't find it, just go to my Instagram at Attitude Nation and I tag Brian all, all over the place. Also, look, I have a list. I know where we need to read a sec- First Corinthians chapter twenty-four. But look, I have a. Li- this is a list of who are, who's going. Right? We okay, have, this is real trip list. Yeah, okay. we got to figure this out. We got to start start the process because yeah, John North, Jessica North, Lincoln and Liv. Maybe I don't know if they're going, but they're on the list. Of course they are. Uh, Brian, me, Caitlin, she's gonna yep. go. Your daughter. Yep. Yeah, I, I haven't fully confirmed that, but um, Donnie Shankle. Let me do this. Ms. Schenkel. You uh, obsessed? I, I don't think technically I can say MRS. Chris Willingham. Maybe his wife. Wife Willingham. Yep. And then I don't know who else right now. Joe Sinnott maybe? I, I, yeah, maybe. Joe's going. I think so, right? Yeah. And then. Hey, I told you we need Joe for our, our Jewish brother so we can have some street cred out there. So do like the Bible wife of Joe. Street yeah. cred. <laughs> hey, we need the street cred. If we some white Christians rolling in and. and Joe can step up and be like, hey, hey, they're with me. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> shalom, brother. Yeah, shalom. So, let, let them through. So, yeah, so we got to figure this out. This is a big crew 12. I, I don't know who else. Kai Bishop, Kai Bishop from yesterday. He's in. Uh, let's see. Brandon so, Duffner. Brandon Duffner. He, he, you know, Kai, K A I, I think, no, K Y. And you know what? Type in. Uh, I don't remember type, his last name. We're friends on Instagram or uh, like, this morning, but type in Bonnie. He's coming. Bonnie. Bonnie. B O N. 24, yep. B O N N I E. We got to reach out back to Jonathan. Remember, Jonathan used to read with us back in the day. I met him at Masters Nat- uh, at Arnold. Yes. Yes. We so, with him. let's confirm. Let's confirm. So, I'll reach out to Brandon and I'll reach out to Joe mm-hmm. and I'll find oh, out. Harry. And Harry, P- Harry and Peter, Harry, funny. Harry and Peter. Mm. And of course, Sherry. Scott Sherry. Uh, of course, uh, Stuart Young. Oh, this is a big crew. <laughs> this is a big crew. It's a big crew. <laughs> right now, this- we're up to twenty. Yeah, but look, see, like we're not chaperones, right? We're just, we're just, we're just creating this trip, and if we we can meet up, we can kind of meet here, we can meet there. So it's not going to be like you know Brian leads or Jessica and John lead or Donnie's mm-hmm. leading. We're just going, we're just creating a group, right? That's the whole thing. No pressure on anyone to lead this thing or decide. But I would like you to lead, though. Oh, thanks, John. We do need a leader. <laughs> I do really think Fine, we do. I'll lead. I'll lead. And I want somebody, I want you to step up and I want you to organize the trips, what we're going to see. And of course we can have team meetings about this with everybody. Maybe we can have some Zoom yeah. meetings. So that's but- the thing. I'll do that, right? I'll create this. I'll, 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 I'll try to, I'll, 
I'll create this whole scenario, what we're going to do, kind of like when we're going to go, here's, you know, but everybody's going to be responsible, right, to buy their own stuff, to book their own tickets, make sure you, you, uh, you just, you go to the, to the events that we are, I will create a schedule and I will proliferate information. I'll send it out. Okay. Should we do an email chain? I think we should start to get organized here. Let's get every one of these people's email. Yeah. Which, of course, I know some of them. And let's go ahead and get on an email chain so we can start doing like updates and newsletters and, you know, do questions of what do you guys want to see in Israel? Let's like, let's, let's, let's take a vote, you know, um, it, just to get, you know, more connected that way. Yep. Good. I'll, so I'll start that process. Um, <clears throat> And I'll create a whole Google folder with all of the information and trips and flights and and uh, hotels and and uh, I mean I'm not going to be dad, but I will definitely lead this and give as much information out as possible. Yeah. Team dad, team dad. Here we go. You're the leader. Hmm. You're leading the way. And you got Joe right behind you as uh, some you know backing you with street cred. Hey, don't worry, John. I will have my. Where is it at? Is it with me? in the other room oh let me go get it here say hold on okay okay brian's going to get something uh let's open our bibles as brian Nitsch is going to get some here first chronicles chapter 24 uh we do read out of the new living translation as you guys know we got king james right next to us right here in person it's in my hands the actual book and of course we have the hebrew and the greek uh ready to pull back here so oh what is I, that i told you john i'm not just a what is that is my Jewish tallit. I want one. Yeah. So my buddy got it for me when the last time he was in Israel. And it's what you it's what the uh priests use when they go and pray and 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 uh and read the word and stuff like that. See it has the uh what? And this is what Jesus will have over his shoulders. See it has the little tassels on it, the blue, the blue braided uh uh dowels right here on the bottom it's got a it's got the uh hebrew on there you know jesus is the king of kings yeah wow. so so the jews in israel wear that on a daily basis when they when they pray yeah yeah isaiah 53 on here mm. and so yeah so it's uh you wow. use that so you know it's called a tallit, which means in Hebrew, a tent. So you put yourself in it, and now you, you're in like your prayer closet. Oh, like Jesus said. Yeah, or your tent. You know, you have your little your, your little tabernacle. That's what it's actually called, tabernacle. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I, that's what I want for Christmas. Oh, I have goosebumps. I know. So if anybody wants to, oh, did you just get hit? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, well I just, you know, when you start thinking about the Lord, it's, he's real. He shows up, baby. Yeah, I know. I I saw it in your face. So when the Lord moves, you feel it. Yeah, he's a he's he's a, as real as I am talking. Yeah, I have that happen to me quite often per yeah. day. Amen. It just hits me, and I like I almost have trouble breathing. You know, and if you if you're questioning, I know we're, we're a few minutes in already, but 20, 13. If you're questioning, like, uh, man, what are y'all talking about? Look, the, here's the answer. Go to God and believe. Mm. that's it, man. Believe, start the process. You know, he, Jesus said in the new Testament, he says, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. So go in, like I told, I was telling a friend of ours the other day, I was like, listen, every time you have questions and you read the Bible and you, cause you know, he's not full believer, not really a believer yet. Ask him, say, show me if you're, you know, God out there, if you're God out there, show me who you are. I want to believe mm. who you are, you know? And go to him in faith, believing that he's real. And look, you, what, what do you have to lose? Like Donald Trump said, what do you have to lose? Right? He's going to show up. If he doesn't show up, you know, he, keep at it. Mm. You know, it's, you, right now you you believe in nothing. So the real God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will show up. And, you know, I think you make a great point, Brian. Ask, go to him, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's, 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 you know, um, Bonnie this morning said, I want to be closer to God. I want to have a better relationship. I feel distant and God is not distanced from, from you. We are as humans sometimes get distance from the Lord. So run to him, hit your knees and pray to him. 
read the word to get to know him. You know, I'll never forget when somebody told Pastor Brett, the Lord just doesn't speak to me. I feel like the Lord just doesn't ever reach out and speak to me. And Pastor Brett said, well, the Bible on your kitchen counter has been sitting there for four years getting dusty. Yeah. And it's glowing and it's breathing and it's moving and it's saying, Christy, read me. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. But no, we're reading Harry Potter books. True. True. Yeah, you nailed it. I mean, look, it's, you know, it's about you have to go to him. Open that thing up. Reach out. You know, with your heart, though, Lord, I, you know, I surrender. What do I need to do to find out the secrets of life? That's, you know, something like that. Yeah. Who are you? Show me. Show me. And that's the answer. Is that, uh, I'm sorry, what's it called again, Brian? Oh, the, the, uh, it's like a prayer shawl, tallit. Tallit. Is that tallit only to be worn in prayer? Or can you just wear that around all the time? I mean, you could. I mean, there's no one stopping you. There's no rule. There's no, you know, there's not, there's not a lot of rules in the Bible. Uh, but yeah, so, so, um, it's just, it's just a symbol. It's not, some, it's not holy. It's not a, some kind of relic, you know, that oh. like, uh, Dr. Strange, it's just a symbol that says, you know, I'm going to do this and, and, and I, I love the Lord and I'm going to, you know, well, it, it, you know, you're so right, Brian. It makes me, it reminds me of King David. Right. It, it, when the, the tent, how it's over your head, because we are now the tabernacle. Right. Mm -hmm. And when King David said, get the tent, put a tent over the tabernacle. And God was up in heaven, just smiling with a joyful heart and says, yeah. oh, King David, I love your heart. Yeah. Thank you for thinking of me. But my son, I don't need a tent. <laughs> but it's the heart that God loves. So I think when you have that over your head and you're praying you're just saying, Lord, I love you. Yeah. He's exactly, exactly. Lord, I love you. I honor you. You know, the, 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 the corners of it actually <clears throat> have, uh, you know, Isaiah 53. And it's like, uh, he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. It's like these, these, um, these prophecies of the Messiah. It's a beautiful thing. I, I, you got to buy one when you're there. You're getting and, emotional. Uh, at you unless those are allergies we'll go with the first one it's allergies it's i know I, look i should have put honey in my coffee i didn't the land of milk and honey yes yes honey does it does it for me i just need to i don't i forget to leave it out and so i forget to put it in the coffee mm. but yeah it's 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 cool man it's cool all these things are look god is sentimental very mm. sentimental and so that's why he does these little things he has these little uh you know, these little things that he, he has and they can be, you know, you, you have these sentimental things now, like your Bible and, and, you know, our show and where we, where we preach the word and, mm -hmm. you know, all these little things. Like when you're going to remember back on Lincoln's baptism and, and then Liv's baptism one day and your own and mm. all this, if you start thinking about, and, you know, the stories of, of um, you and your wife and then you leading you to church and to the Lord and that moment when you broke down, you're like, yes, I need to, I walk forward. And those are sentimental moments that God cherishes and he, they, he celebrates, you know, David, he took, or uh, he took his spear, you know, his staff rather, and he carved it in a bear and he carved in it in a, in a uh, uh, you know, we read, we read that, but we kind of read through it. And uh, those are, he looked, but he could look back on those moments in memorial and say, I took that bear down with the power of God. And I took down mm. that lion by the power of God. Mm. So God is sentimental. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray it in and get to the word here. That was amazing. Brian Natch is on fire this morning. This, the Holy Spirit is working this morning. Amen. We're just fired up to go to Israel. We're fired up to have everybody, everybody with us and fired up about this journey and fired up that Brian has this amazing Talit. Mm -hmm. Talit. Talit. I was close. Talit. Uh, I, would you get me one for Christmas, please? Maybe. Uh, yeah, let me look for one. I, I, I didn't even know where to like, buy I one. I like how demanding Christmas presents. He's are. He's like, you need to just go buy one. You need to lead the trip. <laughs> <laughs> I would like one for Christmas, please, if anybody's listening. 
because uh, I want to wear it every single day when we do this study. That is amazing. Okay, let's pray it in. Um, I, I got to pray it in because I'm just too fired up. Dear God, thank you for making Brian Nitsch so long ago, before Genesis 1-1. Before Genesis 1-1, you made Brian Nitsch, and what a blessing to the world. What a blessing to the world. Amen. Amen. That's it. That's it. That's you, all I want to say. That's all you got to say. That's it. I want to keep it simple because it's the truth. Well, good. Let's do this, huh? Yep. First Chronicles chapter number 24. Uh, and did you know that this is the best chapter in the Bible? Did you know that? I did. Mm -hmm. I did because every chapter we read is the best chapter. Let's go. <laughs> Cut out of that, baby. It's the truth. Any The best scriptures ever are the ones that you're studying. Amen. Because you know why? Because God is in the present, John. And every time you open up the scripture, and even though you're reading about the past, he's in the present. He's right here. He's right here right now. He's alive. And he, cre he makes everything on that page come alive in you. Amen. Stuart Young, so glad to have you. Good morning, brother. Absolutely. How are you doing, Stuart? Brian, do you know how he's doing? Yeah, uh, pretty good. Pretty good. He uh, he said uh, thanks for the prayer. That's nice. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we love Stuart Young. Stuart, if you're just tuning in, go back and listen later, because we got a list of 20 plus people going to Israel. You're on. You're on the list, and we're going to do an email chain, Stuart. So I digress. Let's get to the word. All right, duties of the priest. I'll uh, kick it off, and then uh, why not? This is how, number first one, this is how Aaron's descendants, the priests, were divided into groups for service. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father, and they had no sons. So Eliezer and Ithamar were left to carry on as priests. Mm. With the help of Zadok, who was a descendant of Eleazar, I guess his son, and, and of uh, Himelech, who was a descendant of Ithamar, David divided Aaron's descendants into groups according to their various duties. Eleazar descendants, Eleazar's descendants were divided into 16 groups, Ithamar's into eight, for there were more family leaders among the descendants of Eleazar. All tasks were assigned to the various groups by means of sacred lots so that no preference would be shown. <clears throat> For there were many qualified officials serving God in the sanctuary from among the descendants of both Eleazar and Ithamar. Shemaiah, son of uh, Lathaniel, a Levite, acted as secretary and wrote down the names and assi uh, assignments in the presence of the king. The officials, Zadok, the priest, Ahimelech, and son of Abether, mm. and the family leaders of the priests and Levites. The descendants of Eleazar and Ithamar took turns casting lots. First, lot fell. And th what this is, casting lots, is like throwing, <clears throat> like throwing uh, rocks or dice or something like that, right? Not dice necessarily, but something so that... They were, they, were, they were believing that God would, would direct the, uh, the arrow or the stick that would point to Jehorarib. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't remember. They, weren't, they didn't have the spirit of God in them. So they, that's, no. why, that's why Gideon asked for signs and, you know, and Balaam also. So all these people, um, they didn't always hear the voice of God like we can. You could shut down right now and listen and hear God speaking. He's always trying to speak. Yeah, but, amen. But, but it's different back then. So, yeah. Uh, verse seven: the first lot fell on Jehorib. The second lot fell on. Um, Wait, I think you missed the last line. Oh no, I, I'll reread it. The descendants of Eleazar and Ithacar took turns casting lots. Oh, sorry. Okay, you're sorry. good. You're good. Can't miss a word. I'd rather read twice, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I can mean, say something too. I, I, I. I Please. Really, am excited though when we go to Israel, Israel, or here in America somewhere. But I would love to um, pr pray next uh, with a Levite. I don't know. I'm not saying I have to. I understand that. I just think that it would be really cool. Yeah, do it. 
I just cool. I'm sorry. You know, I just I think it's gonna be really cool to meet a Levite from that the, from the bloodline. You know, nothing wrong with that. A priest in Israel, like a Jewish priest, that's yeah. a Levite, just to like be able to like hold hands and pray to the Lord. Absolutely. You know, or you know, to I will be praying to Jesus and they'll be praying to Yahweh. But you know what I mean? They like pray to God together. That that's gonna be, dude. I'll freaking cry. Yeah, absolutely. So cool. That's like a long I, one. Yeah. I held hands and prayed with a Levite. We just that would be a that'd be amazing thing. From the tribe of Levi. Yeah, man. I'm sure. Look, I'm sure that you're not the first one who has requested that. So I'm sure yeah. that we can. That's that'll happen. Lord, we ask that hap you make that happen when we get there in the name oh, of Jesus. That'd be great. <clears throat> that'd be awesome. Way cool. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Um, let's see. This third lot fell to Harim, the fourth. Wait. The second lot fell on Jediah. The third lot fell to Harim. The fourth lot fell to Siroim. The fifth lot fell to Malikja. Malikja. The sixth lot fell to Mehjamin. Mehjamin. The seventh lot fell to Hakok's Hakakaz. The eighth lot fell to Hebijah. The ninth lot fell to Yeshua. Hey, that's the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Mm. The ninth lot fell to Shekaniah. The eleventh, the tenth lot fell to Shekaniah. The eleventh lot fell to El Shibib. The twelfth lot fell to Jakim. The thirteenth lot fell to Hupahaf. Hupa, Hupa, the fourteenth lot fell to Yeshibab. Yeshibab. <laughs> Interesting. The fifteenth lot fell to Belaigaj, Bel, Belaiga, Belaiga. The sixteenth lot fell to Emir. The seventeenth lot fell to Hazir. The eighteenth lot fell to Hapiz as as. The nineteenth lot fell to Pethahia. The twentieth lot fell to Jehezekel. Jehezekel. The twenty-first lot fell to Jakin. The 22nd lot fell to Gemul. The 23rd lot fell to Deliah. The 24th lot fell to Mazia. Mazia. Mm. Yeah, each group carried out its appointed duties in the house of the Lord according to the procedures established by their ancestor Aaron in obedience to the commands of the Lord, the God of Israel. Awesome. Oh, here is a few more. Um, these were the only family leaders descended from Levi, from the descendants of Aram, Amram, the leader of Shabul, the descendants of Shabul, the leader of Jehudiah, from the descendants of Rehabiah, the leader of Ishiah, from the descendants of Izhar, the leader was Shalomith, from the descendants of Shalomith, the leader was Jehath. From the descendants of Hebron, Jeriel, Jeria was a leader, Amria was second, Jehaziel was third, and Jechamiam was fourth. From the descendants of Uziel, the leader was uh, Micah. From the descendants of Micah, the leader was Shamir, Shamir along with Ishiah, the brother of Micah, Micah being a prophet in the Bible. Yeah. Oh. From the descendants of Ishia, Shia, the leader was Zechariah. From the descendants of Moriah, the leaders were Mali and Mushi. Mm, we've read about Mushi. Yeah, yeah. From the descendants of Jaria, the leader was Benno. From the descendants of um, Mar Marir, Marari, and we just read about Marari, through Jazria. The leaders were Benno, Shoham, Zakur, and Ibri. From the descendants of Mali, the leader was Eli Eleazar, though he had no sons, Eleazar. The descendants of Kish, the leader was Jerahimel. Jera From the descendants of Mushi, the leaders were Mahli, 
Edir, Edir, and Jeremoth. Nice job, Brian. <laughs> Great job. With I the just name. kept. I just kept at it. You know, I just you got to go yeah. with what comes out. You can slam dunk the last paragraph, John. Yeah, that was great. Um, okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, these were the descendants of Levi and their various families. 31. Like the descendants of Aaron, they were assigned to their duties by means of sacred lots without regard to age or rank. Mm. See that, Brian? We all have duties. Right, right. We'll have roles to play. Lots. Age or rank. I like that. Yeah, look at that. No matter how old you are, what your what your who you are in the family, you have a very precious uh, job to do. Mm -hmm. Wow, uh, lots were drawn in the presence of King David, hey, hey. Zodak, uh, Ahimelech, and the family leaders of the priest and the Levites. Oh yeah, man, I am happy, John. Wow, that I don't know why. I mean, I know why, but yeah, you are happy. You're in a great mood today. You're in a great mood all the time. I, and you know, it's because we're in the Bible every day. We're in the word of the living God. It's amazing. And you can feel them inside you just moving. You know, rarely are, I, I, sometimes we cut, we start this. Now, everyone listening, this is a very big deal. We start this one every once in a while. We're kind of a little tired, get beat down by the barbell. You know, just our, our intake of drinks and water and food is not the best, but all of a sudden, a little bit, we begin to read the Bible and just up from this fountain of the living water shoots out joy like never before. Come on, Brian. It, it happens every day. Amen, amen. Anyway, I love it. Well, and also to add too, sometimes, you know, like this morning, I was a little grumpy with my internet. I was kind of getting in a bad mood. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, let's let's do this. And all of a sudden, bam. Yeah. You know, I could, I just, I'm in a phenomenal mood now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, John? Like, like uh, Kai reminded us, when two or more are gathered, guess what? The joy, the man himself shows up, the spirit of God. Mm. And that's that's why, God, Lord, you're so good. You're so good, Jesus. Yeah, amen. Well, what do you think, 25? You know, I have to, I have to get to coaching. That's fine, that's fine. I have to get to coaching. I uh, Big day ahead of me. But I, I tell you what, though, I'd like to read at 25 later tonight because i know brandon duffner wants to read with us we have five scriptures left it's friday so tomorrow today and tomorrow we'll finish how do i pray with a levite though do i i don't <laughs> how would i know who a levite is in israel well so you can you can go uh so one of the ways and we can we'll be there right we'll be at, well maybe we can figure out how to time it right God will God will lead us in the right direction. We have to believe that. And you know, you have those people um, who are at the temple. You know, a lot of times a Levite will have uh, they'll be wearing like a tallit, a tallit, uh -huh. and they, sometimes you know, walking around with one around their shoulders. Um, and also, a lot of times, Levites a lot of times are Orthodox, so they'll have the a lot of times, and it's not in the Bible, of course, but they have the big curls. That they have the the hanging curls, not dreadlocks, but curls that that hang down across their ears and and towards their shoulders. Uh, plus, we can ask, "Hey, I'm I'm looking for a a, a Levite priest." You know. Oh, okay. Uh, we ask and yeah, we can always ask. You know, people are very open, especially with with an honest and innocent heart. You know, people can tell. Yeah. And so I'm, you know, I just I want I want to uh, pray with a Levite. You can, it's something that just simple as that. So we can, you know, there'll be plenty of us around, and I'm sure yeah. we'll we'll have a some type of person that we'll con connect with when we get there, who will be able to help guide us as well. So, are right, you going to pray with me? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, let's go meet a Levite priest, and we'll all three hold hands. Yeah, but and, let's and, not. I know I know that's very special and. and uh, and it is, but don't forget, you are also a priest after the Most High God. You said it. I know it was coming, but that's okay. I'm... That's okay. Uh, look yeah. to honor God and 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 His, you know, the old way uh, of before Jesus was uh, rose from the dead. That's totally mm. fine. Yeah, it's a great thing. It's exciting. Yeah, it just be really cool to say that we prayed with a Levite priest. You know, that'd be just so cool, and not just to say it, not like outwardly, but in in 
inwardly, like just to just to have that experience would be really remarkable, you know, because we're in this journey. We're here, you know, and it would just it's just so cool. So that's exciting. Um, yeah. OK, well, 25. I'm excited. I'm pumped. I, I just don't know if I can wait any longer. Ah, I just want to go. <laughs> it's up to you. I have I have a little bit of time. If you if you if we need to do it later, that's fine, too. No, let's let's uh, let's 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 go right now. Twenty five. All right. Yeah. Uh, let me get to there. Twenty five. Let's do it, huh? We, and it's a lot of a read. It's reading a bunch of stuff, so we can kind of just bang through the end because it's a lot of. You want to start? Let's start it off, John, and then I'll finish it with all those. All right, let's do it. All right, uh, First Chronicles twenty five, New Living Translation. Here we go. David and the army commanders then appointed men from the families of Asaph. Asaph, Asaph, mm -hmm. uh, He-Man, and Judathun to proclaim God's message to the accompaniment, mm -hmm. accompaniment, Accom accompaniment, yeah, like the whole orchestra. Okay, of lyres, mm -hmm. lyres, lyres, harps, and cymbals. Here is a list of their names and their work. So the First, musicians, here we are. Yeah, here we go. From the song, from the sons of Asaph, there were there were Zakur, Joseph, Nathan, Nathaniah, and Azarella. Nathaniah. They worked under the direction of their father, Asaph. Who proclaimed God's message by the king's Azarela. orders. Verse 3. From the sons of Jedathun, there were, there were Gedaliah, Zeri, Shehiah, Shemiah, Hashabiah, mm -hmm. and Matiah. Yeah. Six in all. They worked under the direction of their father, Mattathia. Jonathan, who proclaimed God's message to the accompaniment of the lyre, offering thanks and praise to the Lord. Verse 4. From the sons of He-Man, there were Bukiah, Matania, Uziel, Shubahel, Shubahel, Jeremoth, Hanahai, Hannah Ni Eliatha Gedaliti Romiti Azar mm -hmm. Josh Bakasha uh -huh. Malathi Hothar and Mahasyath Verse five. All these were the sons of Heman, the king's seer, for God had honored him with 14 sons and three daughters. Ooh, nice job. Nice job. A lot of names there. Let's go, baby. I got goosebumps. I know. <laughs> I'm feeling great. And uh, we must honor all of these people for they love the Lord. Because mm -hmm. yeah, when we get to heaven and we're going to see them, they're going to be like, yeah, we were the orchestra there. That's right. They're like, oh, we read about you guys. Yeah, yeah. These guys look. They're the ones who went before, and, uh, and, and when the armies went, they they played the music and marched with the ark. So it's the these. They weren't just the joke, you know. They they were they put themselves in serious harm's way. Mm. And so, uh, yeah, good job. Yeah, thank you. Take six if you want. Slam right, dunk. Take the rest. And um, he man, I, I always love like he. It says he man. I thought about you when I read He-Man. <laughs> it might be him on, right? I don't know how exactly it's pronounced. But I doubt it's He-Man in the in the in the Greek in the uh, Hebrew. You're gonna you're gonna be walking by in heaven, and somebody's gonna yell out He-Man, and you're gonna look over, and it's gonna be him. It's gonna, hey, there he, he is. Yeah, he's gonna say, "I, I heard you calling me He-Man." He's like, "It's all right." It's, yeah. <laughs> it's no, it's okay, buddy. Yeah. I'm like, look, you are my greatest hero as a kid, He-Man. Yeah, and the you know this uh, by the power of Grayskull. 
Yeah. Anyway. Great. Okay. Verse six. All these men were under the direction of their fathers as they made music at the house of the Lord. Their responsibilities included the playing of cymbals, harps, and lyres at the house of God. Asaph, Judah, uh, and Heman, or Heman, reported directly to the king. They and their families were all trained in mu- making music before the Lord, and each of them, 288 in all, wow. were an accomplished musician. The musicians were appointed to their term of service by means of sacred lots, without regard to whether they are were young or old, teacher or student. See, God wants everyone to play for him. Can I just say something real quick? Please. God made it, took his time, dedicated all of this, put it in ink for us to read, and said, I'm giving all of this ink, all of this attention to the world, to John and Brian, to everyone listening for all of eternity, because I love the orchestra of God. Yes, he did. Yep. That's pretty cool. You he know? loves music. Yeah. You know, um, later on when we get into, I think it's Jeremiah or Isaiah. I apologize for not having the exact verse down. The Bible says that the stars in the heavens sing, John. And wow. astronauts can hear if, you, there's, if there's a certain pitch that, may, that, that, that makes the noise. Um, I, I also think... Wow. That uh, you know, that other people have said, you know, before the flood, there was a Genesis talks about the um, there was a crystalline canopy or called it called in Genesis in, in English it says that it's a um, a firmament over the earth, right? But the yeah. earth, of course, the flood they believe destroyed it and caused you know the different atmosphere is now and there's less pressure and, and aging happens rapidly. Anyway, but before that. Uh, other people, scientists and other people think and they believe, those who believe the Bible and, and study the Bible and science, they believe that that, that firmament, that, that, that water type ice canopy, it magnified the sound so that the humans, us and the earth could hear the sound of, this, of, the, of the, the stars and everything. Of the heavens. Wow. Yeah. It's anyway, that's in Job, you know, Job also. So it's interesting. We should... God yeah, is just beautiful. He's amazing. He he it, doesn't he doesn't go halfway. He goes full 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 fledged. Yeah, and it's cool because a lot of people think that's how the dinosaurs ended, possibly. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Pastor Brett's big on that. By the way, mm-hmm. he he truly believes that. So and do that, I. I mean, we. Were, yeah. I was just gonna say he we we there was something in the beginning different. We had a different world. You know, we had more air, more oxygen, more. We had more uh, biometric pressure so that the, uh, the dinosaurs could breathe more. They could grow bigger. And now mm-hmm. they don't, of course. So Yeah, like fireflies, like all these insects and everything. They used to be three times as big as they are now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if I want like a firefly going by my head like three feet long. <laughs> and it's all science. That's yeah. all it is. You know, it's all proof. I mean, you know, we don't need 100% proof of everything in the Bible because we have faith. We walk with faith. But... Everything's proven. Mm-hmm. Old meets the new perfectly. Jesus fulfilled all of the um, um, the prophecies. Of prophecies. Um, science, science, science. Fact, fact, fact. Proof, proof, proof of Jesus uh, right, uh, rising. I mean, I, I could go on. Yeah. You know, I was, I was, did I tell you, I was watching, I might have seen it. I was watching, um, it's called Discoveries of the Ancient Israel. Anyway, some YouTube channel. This guy's an archaeologist. He found in the Sudan, which is the, the country below Egypt in Africa, the, the oldest inscription of Yahweh, the word Yahweh. Oh really? Yeah, and I'll send it to you. It's in it's in uh, it's in the one of the, it's in the bottom of one of these uh, columns in this destroyed temple thingy. Legit, it's legit. He went there with a video, traveled by himself in a jeep across the Nile in a ferry, hours and hours, and with his camera. And in the inscription, it says, "The nomads, God, Yahweh." And wow. who were the nomads? The Jews. They were. They had no no land, and they had no no house. They had tents for forty years. 
And it was a huge, you know, everybody knew that the um, Israel was nomads for the longest time. Yeah, send that to me immediately. It's the coolest thing ever. It's like he got in, he got a, an Egyptologist, someone who's versed in, uh, in that the symbol, what do you call it? Uh, crypt, whatever that language is called. It's like with the letters and the, uh, the pictures and how to pronounce all what the, what the pictures mean, the bird means, and this symbol here. Um, hieroglyphics, someone who's, who's, who knows hieroglyphics. They, they got it all translated and it says the nomad. God of Yahweh, or, or God, their yeah. God is Yahweh. Yeah, wow. I'll send it to you. It's pretty cool. Wow, please do. And maybe if you have time, throw it on the chat board too. Because I think even when you listen to the show on the recorded version, you can still see the comments. Mm-hmm. You can. So that's great. Yeah, throw it up on the chat board as well. Yeah. All right. Hey, Brian, buckle up for this one. I'm ready. This is all you, baby. Let's Number get him go- <laughs> verse nine. The first... Now, these are the, these are the musicians. The first lot fell to Joseph of the Asaph clan and 12 of his sons and relatives. The second lot fell. Oh, first of all, just notice how God always uses entire families for things. Oh, amen. He loves it. The second lot fell to um, get a, a Gedilah, the 12 of his, and 12 of his sons and relatives. The third lot fell to Zakur, the and 12 of his sons and relatives. The fourth lot fell to Zeri, and 12 of his sons and relatives. The fifth lot fell to um, Nethaniah and 12 of his sons and relatives. The sixth lot fell to Bukia uh, and 12 of his sons and relatives. The seventh fell to Azrela, Azrela and 12 of his sons and relatives. The eighth lot fell to Jeshiah uh, and 12 of his sons and relatives. The ninth lot fell to Madaniah and 12 of his sons and relatives. The tenth lot fell to Shem- Shemi or Shemai and 12 of his sons and relatives. The eleventh lot fell to Uziel. He's the guy who died by touching the ark. And 12 of his sons and relatives. We love you, Israel. Yeah. We'll see you in heaven, brother. Yeah, you're the man. Hey, who am I? Who is, is Uziel? I've messed up so many times. We all I, have. We all have, brother. We're with you. But by but, the uh, grace of Jesus, we would have been right where you are. Yeah, you're definitely knee, definitely hit hard uh, in Abraham's bosom, and you're up there in heaven right now having a grand old time. We'll see you soon. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 19, the 12th lot fell to Hashabia and the 12 of his and 12 of his sons and relatives the 13th lot fell to Shabul or Shabal and the 12 of his sons and relatives the 14th lot fell to Mattathiah and 12 of his sons and relatives well there's Mattathiah and Mattaniah interesting mm. Uh, the fifteenth lot fell. Can you imagine the confusion. There? Hey, Mattathiah. I mean, Mattaniah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. The fifteenth lot fell to uh, Jeremoth, Jeremoth, and the twelve of his sons and relatives. The sixteenth lot fell to um, Maniah, and the twelve of his sons and relatives. The sixteenth lot fell to Josh Bekasha, and twelve of his sons and relatives. Eighteenth lot fell to Han- Hanani. And twelve of his sons and relatives. Ninth, the nineteenth lot fell to Malathi, and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twentieth lot fell to Elitha, and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-first lot fell to Hothari, Hothir, Hothir, and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-second lot fell to. Gedalati, Gedalati, Gedalti, Gedalti, and twelve of his sons and relatives. He was he was the Italian. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it ends with the I, right? You gotta anytime. That's what they always say. Hey, hey and the, the thirteen, the twenty third lot fell to Mahazoth, Mahazioth, Mahazioth. And twelve of his sons and relatives. 
the twenty fourth lot fell to Ram M T Izir Ram Ramati Izir. Oh, how do you say that? Let's just you know. Let's Google this real quick. Here's what he's. Ramanti Ezer. Ramanti Ezer and 12 of his sons and relatives. Dun, dun. So those, uh, and that's it. So those are the all the summary of um, all of the uh, symbol players, liars, the liar players, right? A liar is like a, uh, like a whistle type thing. Mm. And um, a harp. So the harp, the liar, and the symbol, and all of that made that's beautiful good. music. Give it up to him. Yes. I'm standing up. I'm standing up. That was uh, hey. Thank you to the to the God. Yeah. Who's yeah. The man. Awesome work to all of the musicians uh, and they're playing, you know, dancing for the Lord with all their might, playing instruments for the Lord with all their might, loving God and and just wow, what a great uh you know, this is the greatest uh the, you know, Hans Zimmer wishes he had these uh musicians. Exactly he does. Yeah, great. That was amazing. That's the greatest chapter in all of the Bible right there. Mm -hmm. 25. Oh, and then if you go to 26, it's the next greatest chapter in all of the Bible here. Another great chapter. Yeah, yeah. God is good. Yeah, amen. That was so much fun. We read 24, 25 and uh, learned so much, had so many great discussions. Wow, life-changing. Ooh. It is. God is so good. Hey, did you hear that? Did, can you hear those birds? I love that sound, by the way. So, so I, my daughter has two birds now, and I thought I would hate it. It's I, I keep hearing them chirp in the background, and it makes my heart happy. So it makes mine too. Yeah, I I, like... I'm not a fan, but now I'm kind of like I'm kind of a fan. Yeah, I love it. I, usually, I'm a stickler with noise in the background, but that is fantastic. I mean, I can shut my door. But... Oh, do not. You know Do what I'm not. saying? Like I was, I was gonna bring it up because you know I, the mic picks up a lot of stuff, and I was like, man, yeah. do I? I kind of like. I'm. It's really growing on me. Last night I was sitting there chilling, and I was like, man, it's it just sounds like life. It's great. Anyway, well, it's, it's two it beautiful is. birds. Uh -uh. Yeah, I'll pray it out. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for uh, listening. This is, and journeying on this trip. You know, we, gosh, Lord, we we love you. We come to you. And we get to celebrate and participate in honoring these musicians, right? And these Levites and their duties and, and, and what they get to do. And they get to, some people are worshiping at the altar. Some people are, are with the bread. Others are at the, uh, the, the sacrificial floor and others are, you know, are, are on the sides with the candles and, and the menorah and so on. Lord, it's so cool. You get, you, we participate just by honoring them, you know? It's amazing. You are amazing. And every time we read this and we listen, we think about you and your process and how you, you brought the word, the living word of God into the earth. And then that, that produced the son who was the sacrifice. God sacrificed himself for us. What an amazing moment. We love you with all of our heart. And Lord, lead us as we, we get this Israel trip ready. I know it's two years, but we're getting, it's two years exactly from today. The seventeenth. Oh, oh wow! Holy cow! Holy sure smoke. is. And so we we're excited about that. Guide us into the truth and exactly where we need to go, who we need to talk to, and who we need to get on the list. And we love you, Lord, with all of our heart. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. <laughs> amen. Full prayer. Wow! Two years on the dot. Yeah, that's cool. I just realized it. Amen to that. So let's get that email chain rolling. And uh, let's start finding a place where we're going to stay, what we're going to go see. Of course, of course, we have some some of the big things like the Jordan and Mount of Olives. And, um, you know, the, the I'm, I could go on, you know, so many, so many places uh, everywhere that Jesus went, basically. Um, the temple, um, if we want to go on top and pray, even though we've already had that discussion, how I don't think it's fair that we can, but the Jews can't. I digress. Definitely the Wailing Wall, of course. Oh, yeah. And a million other places, right? It's going to be exciting. We're going to yeah. do it all. Mount of Olives, and we're going to read the last couple chapters of the book of Revelation of Jesus. So I'm pumped because, <laughs> you know what, that's the moment where he's going to step on that thing and just going to put 
push open, a giant water uh, river is going to form, come out of the ground. It's exciting. Amen, amen. We'll see you guys. Who know, we'll see you guys back later for a weightlifting talk show, of course, and then um, might even spark another Bible podcast up tonight. So that's the we'll goal see. with Brandon. Yep. God bless.